today I'm gonna do a video on a variety of things so I'm just gonna wait until maybe somebody comes in we're gonna be doing a little bit of mental health awareness a few things that want to be said a few things that want to come through the last while speaking on the unfiltered nature and wanting to show up as I am to kind of to share my expression to share the things that I go through and to also in doing so stand by anybody that is is going through a similar thing so I'm just going to be candid here and say that some days it's like there's a light bulb that goes on in my head and all of these expressions come through um, channeling happens I feel clear I feel energetic I feel alive I feel like I can't possibly stand to not express myself to not show up as who I am and and I do and I'm much more confident in doing so and there are times when I'm withdrawn withdrawn into myself compressed tired depressed sad unable unable to express these things that I know to be true to my very soul so one of the topics that I want to touch up on right now it's a theme that's been running through my life for quite a long time and I thought it a very interesting subject and it's the parallels between bipolarism and spiritual emergence and this is a very interesting subject and you can actually go really deep into it because not everything is as it seems and it's not all black and white as that but the highs and lows in bipolarism, and there are various forms of that as well, do strongly mimic spiritual emergence. And this was a, a term coined by Stanislav Grof. He, he actually started with spiritual emergency, and it speaks of series of awakenings and psychoses and breakdowns, crises that essentially get you to crack open and get in touch with who you really are. Um, there is a big overlap between the terminology with awakening and mental health awareness. There is. There's no way around this. It's there. Um, we've not really yet come to a point where we're able to effectively help people. Um, a lot of people are kind of slipping through the cracks when it comes to these things, especially when it comes to diagnoses and the ways that people are being helped, what, what the actual causes are. It, it does no good to strictly look at it from a physical perspective, like, okay, there's just an imbalance and we've got to fix it in this way, or to strictly look at it from, you know, oh, it's a spiritual um, awakening and then just leave them to be. So there's a lot on this subject. I'm watching a show right now. It's called Fi. Um, it's actually a Turkish show on Netflix. Um, I was looking through a bunch of options that I could watch and my soul was guided to choose this one and it's reawakened in me entirely this concept of of art and movement and passion and madness and and how to convey these things of the human condition there's a lot of themes in there that I want to go back into and I will especially when I detail out more posts concerning certain mood and personality disorders especially when it comes to the theme of the more psychopathic or Machiavellian traits but right now this is a video with an open letter, an open letter to anybody that might be struggling with any type of mental health difficulty, with any of the difficult, uh, harder to shift stuff. Um, this is a stand with you to say, I am with you. I'm here. I see you. I know what you are going through. I know how difficult it can be. I know how impossible it can be to get the support that we need. I know that the resources that are out there right now are wholly lacking. I know that sometimes things that set off to help might end up doing more harm than good. Oftentimes out of ignorance. And I wanted to read this post that I wrote for you, you that may be going through this. Um, maybe feeling alone, maybe struggling, may even be numbed and shut down um, by these so-called solutions. I had titled it Pi Bipolarism Awareness, um, but it doesn't have a title, it doesn't have a name, it just is. And here's my expression from my heart to you. This journey has taken me into the very depths of the earth. I cannot freely show up 
without making mention of the instability that has birthed the clarity. Speak of the tingling in my limbs, the urges to create that stem from the urges to destroy. Where does this all come from? Without art, without conveying my emotions, I would die. What is obsession and what is not? I would not give up my madness for anything. I would not put it back on the shelf, even if I were promised the life of my dreams. I lie cocooned in it, warmed by it, the thing I cannot stand to express, but can't stand to not. Nobody understands, but those that have been through it. I am not to pretend any longer. I can't stand social obligations. I am abrupt. A light switch goes off in my brains, then I am off the concept. Somewhere, someone gets on the stage, and I am filled with their inspiration. I can see down the tunnel view and otherwise I am in the blackness all around. They say there is a difference between mood and personality disorders, as if there is a line that can be drawn. I am on either side, then. I am the blackness in the white, and the white in the blackness. I am speaking of freedom, and I know it not. From this stems the most magical of works. From this is also a great suffering that nothing can touch. You couldn't pull it from me. What would be left? If I am here to go absolutely mad and make something from it, bring it on. I am no longer to pretend a sense of normalcy. Give me your most mundane of labels. Give a life a box. I am with me till the end. Whatever this means and whatever it does not. I don't know another way. And I will tell myself tales that this is spiritual emergence, not just some crisis. Not just a brokenness that others do not experience. Maybe this is why everything that has always felt so daunting, so massive, so damn deep... You stand on the other side saying, just do it. Do you even know a fraction of what that costs? What it feels to be trembling with this electricity? What it feels to see in high definition with details blurred out? The greatest contradictions are the greatest art. Don't you see? This is my beauty. This is my uniqueness. For years I fought to ca cast her off so that I might be accepted. More me. Special. Not that anymore. I thought it was trauma. I thought it was mind rot. Look, it still happens. It is happening now. Whether you see it or not is not is your own prerogative. I am in a grand mental asylum, and this is my wake-up call. I am being guided towards the light. At least I didn't end up in there. Thank God I didn't end up in there. Oh, how they would love to medicate this perspective. Squeeze the life out of these eyes. Make me comply. Numb the pain and call it the day they ended it. I am not like you. I choose the impulse, the fullness of feeling. I also lose a lot. I break. I'm writing this letter to you that went mad from your feeling, and you that were made to forget. You that has a vision, a voice, and a deep, deep secret. You who took your beauty in your own hands and squeezed it out like a dirty mop. Here, they said, take these pills. It will all be better in the morning. And the morning never came. And the colors blend into each other. The grayness swallowed it all. You didn't feel that sharp breath of aliveness. You could not create anything. They told you it was all a delusion, and you believed them. You took their way out, and you never got out. I want to say we are not like them. I want to say something different, but I cannot. There used to be rituals and customs that would nurse our doubt, bridge the gap, and cross over our understanding. Now we are alone here. We feel like we are alone here. What of us? Are we really mad, or is it the world that has gone out of control, forgotten how to listen? I see you there, repeating the same behaviors over and over again, trying to find a break in their patterning, trying to find a breath of freshness for yourself, looking for meaning in the way you stack up the odds. Running from yourself, screaming, breaking things against their lack of understanding. I see you trying to be, be something you are not. I see that you are a romantic tale they tell, or a horror story around a campfire, the ones who went crazy. You were herded across, but you never got there. They locked you up, silenced you. They say, around you hover the burdens of your miscommunications, the victims of your inability to house in your vessels. These energies are trying to communicate. Don't silence us now. Not this sharp way I feel, nor this clear way I see. Call it madness, but do not take it away. This is for you on your bathroom floor, taking the pills because you think it will take the pain away. You are not like the rest. Hear me. 
See, it really is this way, but it is not a curse. Damn it, we need a new way of relating. I wish I could show you that this is your superpower. The only way you will be able to make peace, peace through passionate release. I cannot convey it to you any more urgently. You are perfectly broken and whole. You are exactly right. You need support. You need an outlet. But you are not what you have grown up hearing. You being flat and numb serves no one. You don't fit in the box. Get out. Get out. I know it hurts and no one ever listens. I know. Oh God, I know this deep pain. It is an agony. It is an ecstasy. Otherwise, would we ever really want to leave it behind? And we really want, all we really want is to be loved and understood. But the latter is dispensable. They'll look at the expression and they will not get it. You will have felt so good birthing it. Hang on to that. That is what you must reach for. That you felt it passing through you. You allowed it. Don't shut it down. Don't forget. I am here with you. Even though I can't help you now or reach you, I have been crawling on all fours, gathering the courage to do so. I have been there. I am there, and I'm not able to hold this secret much longer. Screw how it appears. This madness never needed a sponsor. I just want you to know I am with you, deeply with you, in your shit. I see you. I feel you. I am there. I have been there, and I have nowhere else to go. I couldn't cast off my shadows. It's a blanket wrapped right around me. It is my warmth, and it is my wisdom. I long to warm you, too. Until the day I can, I leave you with a wellness wish. And I see you, note. A smile on my face for your beauty, your deep, deep beauty. And a plea for you not to change or try to hide. Don't leave me in it alone. Always, until the end, I love the you you are. Thank you. This uh, is an open letter to anybody going through any struggle, any mental health struggle, going through things that you possibly stand to share with anybody around you, or feel like you are so alone in the middle of it, like the darkness never ends. I know this feeling well, and I know how not equipped a lot of the services around us are how difficult it is for people in our lives to to understand these things oftentimes we take a black and white view of things uh, we'll look at something with utter duality a disorder and think this is bad this is bad this must stop we must suppress it we must end it why is it there and we will forget the part of world or the gifts that it brings ancient cultures had a very different interpretation of when someone began to go through a crisis or a spiritual awakening there was different type of support for this kind of thing um, there was a way to channel the the craziness that is going on and essentially allow the unhealed to become the healer because why? Why do we experience all of these dark things? Why do we have so many different experiences? Why do we go through sickness? Why do we go through hell? It does not to remain there. It's not to be labeled as such and then run on a little hamster wheel and remain in that, in that struggle. Oftentimes, if you overcome it, you're then able to help others with it. You're able to come out with nuggets of wisdom. And um, that's how a healer is oftentimes born. The, the sickness, the healing chooses the healer not the other way around it's not something about and purchase i once read an amazing quote in a book called the um i think it was the uh, some treaties on occult, occult medicine by samuel Aunwer. and there was this amazing section there talking about how and just because a physician, you know, has gone off and gotten the training and gotten the degree and is being paid high wages and is healing and this and that and the other does not make this person. Because it's so much more than that. It's so much more than labeling yourself as something or, you know, being being trained in it. Oftentimes, if you have not had this deep experience of what a struggle is, how can you actually help a person going through that struggle? A lot of times, the ways that help is doled out is a suppression of symptoms. It's a suppression of what is going on, of what is channeling through these people. I know very intimately that mental crises are actually a bridge. 
they're actually part of an awakening. There are many awakenings and many phases. And something like the dark night of the soul, which is a very intense period where one goes through a, a deep depression or a lot of mental struggles and has a lot of the concepts about themselves ripped away from themselves. That's uh, part of the awakening. It's important. It's necessary. You know, if you do not experience these struggles and question things, then why would you go to the next level? It doesn't happen. But at the same time, these things can be very dangerous. They can feel completely out of control, especially without the right support. You not knowing what it is can mean a person can end up in a mental asylum, being treated by drugs that are doing nothing except suppressing the symptoms. And that person is then isolated from society. You know, so yeah, just just stop showing us this. That's not a way to deal with it whatsoever. And you know, if somebody, for example, is going through this and they're not getting support, the next thing you know, they're they're you know either internalizing it, like thinking, well, you know, something's wrong with me, as happened to me when I first began to have a lot of struggles with myself. I I thought, you know, this is my fault. I I've done something that's you know, this is punishment, or I'm not putting the pieces together, and that's why everything's falling apart. It's really only in hindsight that you can begin to see the pattern, that this is pushing you towards something. But what if the people that are going through it right now, you know, what if the, the lack of resources and support to understand through us and open up these barriers uh, for communication? A really interesting article, and Get is the shamanic view of mental illness. There's a video tells the story of a shaman that actually went into a mental asylum. All right, guys, most of these people in here are actually having an awakening, okay? And they're trapped, they're stuck because the beings that are trying to communicate with them cannot communicate. The channels throughout their bodies are blocked up. The emotions and the expressions that they're having, they're unable to express them because they're being numbed and medicated and drugged. It's it is a crisis of monumental levels, but I think what I wanted to speak on most potently today is that there is such beauty, such beauty to them, to these questions, to these feelings that come to us, to this madness itself. Would you be able to go back in history and look at some of the greatest painters, artists, and whoever they were? And take away from them their disorder, take away from them their unique view on the world. If they had not been driven mad by them to create or show something, or if they did not have what were their vices, their addictions, their pains, their struggles. This is a strong theme in this five series that I was talking about. You know, is it justice for us to go and treat them? And who are we to treat them? What are you treating? We're not asking the right questions. This is an important aspect to, to talk about. Sometimes you can, you know, just ask and research, but not even realize that you're not asking the right question. Is is the question that we're wrong and we needed to fix it? Or is there something that we're missing from the picture? A more holistic view being that everything is connected, everything is connected. And so you take it butterfly effect, you're going to impact a whole other slew of things. First of all, first of all, what do these symptoms actually speak of? Because it's not enough just to think that an isolated symptom is a disease or is this or is that. There's actually so many symptoms that could be many diseases and diseases that have symptoms. It's, it's, it's much more interlocked than it is. Oh, if you um, display these cr criteria, you are now this disorder or this label. This goes for medical problems and for mental problems, for everything. The way that we basically diagnose things and take them from discrete lists of symptoms is entirely ineffectual. It might help people to find resources and find support in a label, even find support in an identity. A lot of the times when you're going through a lot of these, you know, sometimes they're spiritual emergencies and sicknesses of the soul. Sometimes they're actually shamanic illnesses, as in the person is experiencing some extreme level of psychosomatic illness, autoimmune disorder, um, a lot of years of darkness, of problems, mental illness. They're experiencing 
is it's a form of training it's a form of initiation they're going through come out on the other side having learned something very fast paced course now, it does not happen to everyone it's not something that happens every day you don't stumble out of bed and next thing you know your entire life is falling apart because this is happening but when it who do you turn who do you turn to who 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 among us is speaking about this where do news working the news sitting and talking about politics and viruses and who fear where, where do we go to talk about these very real things that we all experience and how do we frame them what is the context of them because a lot of the contexts that we still learn let's say in school or university or still here around us are very out beliefs like there's there's a lot of them and they all have little branches oftentimes talking along those branches and questions giving answers to questions that are not being even being asked and not questioning can lead to a, a whole slew of negative events because going in and being told you have this diagnosis which therefore means you must take this medication and not questioning that that can mean a whole lot of things that can have far-reaching consequences whether that's because the things are not right for you or they harm you for a different reason or because there was a reason for the initial imbalance to begin with i can tell you that the first time that i went to a psychiatrist i, I can i can tell you he was wholly unqualified like this person to hold me in the space of the eating disorders that he was attempting to to cure it was a very uncomfortable circumstance because i could not actually talk about the you know, let's say the, the emotional or mental or spiritual backings for any of my decisions. It was solely clinical. It was like, what to eat and why and keep a diary and do this. And all right, here's a prescription for Prozac. So that was amazing. That was the first experience of what it would be like to get help, right? And I took this Prozac for the first time at its single pill dose. And I scaled up to the two pill dose over the course of let's say three months two three months and I have not been back since <laughs> dropped that goodbye had a whole slew of other negative experiences after that where my mental health declined improved changed twisted inside outside all around for these reasons that I'm speaking about right now that there was a greater purpose to it that I derive a different meaning from it when I first shut me down I was looped, like I was crazy. I was, I was not there. I was disassociating on this first dose. Like I couldn't feel anything. I was numb, I was flat. I didn't feel like myself. It was like, need me, me was taken and watered down. Just watered down, not, not there anymore. Increasing the dose, like there was no reason for that. There was no reason for them to increase the dose other than the root cause with this person issues so of course like two three months later the issues have accepted it's gotten worse or you're not getting the support you need so they're like ah okay so more drugs that is the point at which i chose to stop it because it wasn't about to do any good it wasn't going to help with anything what what was this person even thinking to think that the what would help a person deal with an issue that they couldn't address or get to the root of now actually out here I treatment medication whatever it is that a person might need to justify or like stop a crisis or help themselves that's all well and good but where i'm at framing it and the fact that there are no alternatives i mean there are all alternatives but through the conventional pathways that we go through, most people do not firstly recommend a holistic view of the trouble or recommend any alternative route. And I find that to be problematic because the these things, I mean, perhaps people do not relate to the concept that they are no longer alive as the 
and they can't create and they're not really there. Perhaps there are other angles that someone might relate to on. Perhaps that is the fact that a multi-billion industry is destroying the earth and everything that's around us by drugging us and keeping us under control. Perhaps another angle to look at things from is that these medications actually leach nutrients. They leach nutrients from our bodies in order to be processed. Not to mention the heavy metals and other complications and additives that are within them. But the fact that they are leaching nutrients, that they have primarily claimed to be an imbalance they are solving, is ridiculous. That's one of the, the things that completely opened my eyes when I started looking into these things. It's like, so you're telling me that a shortage of zinc is a, a low mood or a shortage of magnesium is this fatigue and an inability to get out of bed. But if I take this medication, lo and behold, it leaches magnesium. Like it's, it's a problem. So there are so many different ways to approach this. I think I want to leave it on that, that these things are not as they seem and going through something this difficult I really wish that there would be resources to hold people in their these incredibly initiatory experiences of struggle uh, because it's not a deep dark tunnel that you're never going to get out of um, that's another one of the views that I find incredibly daunting and difficult to, to deal with is that it's a permanent label you know once you receive that label that's it you're a lifetime sufferer you have to take drugs for the rest of your life or, you know, you're always going to not be able to deal with things in this and this way. And in fact, that was one of the most daunting aspects of getting over my eating disorder. It was the fact that everywhere I looked, everything that I read about constantly had this looped programming that said it would never heal. It would never get better. It would always be at the back of your mind. It would always be something that you're going to manage. And I am here as a testament to tell you that once you truly get some, rid of something or deal with it, you deal with it. That's it. And that is what we should aim for. It shouldn't simply be a management, a management of symptoms because you're bound to drive yourself crazy at a certain point with that. Whether that's with autoimmune symptoms health problems. You don't want to be in the boat of you have this forever and now you have to deal with this with these incompetent means that we have because we've got nothing else to tell you. So I think getting to the root, taking our lives back, um, having hope that what we go through has deeper meaning has beauty to it despite all the ugliness that we might associate with certain things or even if it's not as pretty as we would like it to be it's not controlled it's not fitting into a box more space there should be more space for people to show up unapologetically as who they are and not have that immediately called out and labeled as a certain thing or another and as for the labels themselves and the comfort that it brings for people to know that there are others that are with them going through this i am completely for that and i also want you to know there truly is hope for anything that you deal with for it to be something that you can overcome, something that you can resolve, something that can teach you a lesson, and in the end, maybe even something that we learn to live with. But I just want you to know that living with it or not, you know, you you are loved, you are seen, and there is just so much more in this world that I wish to share with you, to experience together. And truly, no matter what you think of yourself in this deep darkness that you go through, you are a light. You are a light. And to go through these deepest darknesses is really a fishing exercise for all of the gold that you're going to bring up. And all the light that you're going to shine through all those cracks where you felt like you've broken. I love you.